Hey, what's up guys? Chris Trini here for Chris Quar. Welcome to another Tutorial Thursdays. This one's really special because I get to show you a project that I did for a client, which I don't usually show on this channel, but I think I'm going to show a lot more of because I think there's a lot of value in some real world projects. So this one was a music video, more of a lyric video or a mixture of both for a band called Yellow Dog Conspiracy. So as you can probably tell, if you're a filmmaker or an editor, you can see that this took ages. I mean, there's a lot of really complex things that are happening that are also really simple when you break them down, which is why I wanted to do a breakdown for this video for you guys. So for this first one, and yes, I say first one because this will probably be a more multiple part series because there's so much to cover. But we will talk about the double exposure and all of those side of the effects next week with a full breakdown on how to shoot double exposure and how to edit double exposure for video. In this one, what I really want to overview are these effects right here. So you can see that there is a lot of really intricate parts moving together, but we're going to peel back layer by layer and hopefully this will be a lot less daunting and it will be something that you can maybe use and apply for your own projects. So let's jump into it. All right, so let's start with this trippy tunnel of uh, fingers. So a lot of these elements are actually parts of the body, whether it's arms, hair, uh, fingers, like in this case, parts of the face. And this is all because story-wise in this video, we are really diving deep into this uh, character. So a lot of the imagery plays on that fact that she is trapped, that she feels kind of hopeless and lost. So that's why a lot of these elements that hint towards those feelings are parts of her own body that are also juxtaposed with these really kind of uh, empty and, and desolate and abandoned sceneries. And here's something that I want to make sure to include in these videos is that I'm not just showing you guys the visual technique, but also a little bit of my reasoning so that, that you guys can actually apply some of these things for your own story, you know, and, and, and change it to, uh, to your own vision. So now that we've established sort of the visual theme, now uh, you can find ways to insert that into the effects that you're doing. And and let me say this again, this is really important because honestly, if you don't have this sort of idea to begin with, all of your visuals are just visuals to look cool and that's it and there's no depth to them. Even if it's a very basic idea, but carrying that out throughout your video, you know, carrying it out in the beginning and then evolving it in the middle and then having it um, sort of, you know, a conclusion in the end, these are all really important steps to not only have cool visuals, but that also means something. All right. so back into the technical side of this tutorial. You can see that it's it's a very trippy effect and uh, it's actually simpler than it looks. So these are these are hands that kind of look like birds, uh, again, you know, being trapped, but also the body parts showing uh, hints of freedom. So uh, all I did for this, you can see that there's several pre-comps. Each pre-comp is for each uh, set of layer that I've also separated out into 3D and just attached to a null which has a just two keyframes for the position animation. And essentially you can see the null right here. It's just moving in its Z axis in 3D closer to the camera, uh, you know, all the way past it. And by attaching all of these other groups of hands or fingers uh, in, as 3D layers, but to that 3D null, it just follows that path and uh, they seem to be moving past the camera in 3D space. So that's that's how you do that. But let's take a look at the actual layers and what these uh, these hands are actually made of. Well, if I double click on this, you can see that it's just a hand. And I had to pre-compose this. And I know you're expecting to see a bunch of duplicate copies, a bunch of layers. But really, all of these are duplicated, not by actually duplicating the layers. But as you can see here, there's an effect called Kaleida, CC Kaleida. This is such a cool effect for these uh, type of trippy effects. It has so many different purposes. So let me turn this off real quick. And you can see that we see the arm from before. So I just had to apply a linear color key. And obviously this is all tinted by this adjustment layer it has a tint and some curves effect. But for the main layer here, all we are doing is adding a linear color key to get rid of some of that background that we saw over here. And then adding a CC Kaleida to make these copies. Now, I recommend you guys playing with this effect and experimenting yourself because all I had to do to get this look was tweak a few parameters within this effect. So you can see that I set it to flower, but you can also, you know, change it to different shapes 
and some of them will work some of them won't you know you can see that this is giving us different sort of looks but none of them really work with what we're trying to do until i just was you know browsing through it set it to flower change the rotation a little bit this is another thing that you can change you can rotate this uh this effect to reveal different parts of your image so you can see that uh, by rotating it, I could have a completely different look of kind of like hands reaching for each other, which this could also work, but I wanted to go for more of the uh, the bird look. So this is a really powerful effect, which allowed me to do a lot of these instances and really kind of mirrored image and, and parts of the image. So, uh, you know, it's, a, it's all about layering certain effects. So once we have this really cool and interesting thing, why not add, you know, uh, a little bit of rotation? So they're rotating, now they're parented to this null object, they're moving in 3D space, and now all of a sudden you have a very dynamic looking scene that looks very complex, but really you just had some copies spread out in 3D space with an effect that made it look really trippy. Not bad at all. We're already done with that effect. Pretty simple. I told you guys. We have something very similar here. Again, uh, you can see that that same type of grouping. I've only did it twice. Uh, this is sort of a, a closer layer to the center here. We have something else going on, which is, again, just arms rotating. Uh, and all of these shapes, all these really cool textures and these abstract forms are created by the same footage essentially with again this collide effect. So you can see here we have that same arm uh, and if I turn that on it creates this group and then I have a, uh, another copy that creates sort of this uh, these uh, these outside hands. If I turn that off you can see what that's doing. So very cool and one thing that I want to mention is we can add rotations and keyframes to all of that stuff but I also want you to pay attention that in the footage you can see that the arm is rotating. Now, something simple like this, adding a real rotation to your subject, to whatever thing you're filming that you're later going to be adding all these effects can, can again, give you some really nice and trippy results because now when the hand is moving, you can see that rotation and what it's doing in our frame. This is also being affected by that same rotation. So your visuals can feel a lot bigger and just a lot more intricate if you are planning some of these things even in the shooting stage. Or sometimes it's just good to get a few plates of just random things, like random rotations, random movements, and taking the time and post to play with it until you get a result that you like. We have a flower made up of hands. And for this one, I actually didn't use the Kaleida effect. All of these are individual copies that were duplicated and rotated into place to, to form this larger figure. So it, it's the same kind of idea, but there is a way of doing this manually and actually creating a shape that, you know, exactly how you want it. Like this was a very specific thing that I had in mind. I wanted these hands reaching out and kind of opening up like a flower. Uh, and, you know, to, to get it to this specific with these many elements overlapping, I had to do it manually. I had to just, you know, literally duplicate each each footage. With the footage, of course, we have that linear color key to get rid of some of that background that I was filming against. Warp stabilizer to get rid of the motion because I shot all of these actually handheld. And a lot of times that will cause issues because there's camera shake and stuff moves around. So I needed to take out the motion first. And that's essentially all I did for these uh, these hand layers. And I just duplicated a bunch of copies. And you can see that I actually have uh, them organized in groups. So for each layers for each like scaled layer I have four or so hands that are parented to a null object and you can see that I kept doing this for all the instances that I whenever I kept duplicating I'm, I kind of kept the structure because you can parent these individual groups to a null object and I could just move that null object and just those set of hands but then what I can also do is parent all of these null objects to a master null which has my animation. So might seem a little intricate, might seem a little useless, but trust me, when you're dealing with this many layers and you're starting to build up some more intricate shapes, this sort of structure is going to save you a lot of time and headaches because then let's say I want to rotate maybe just this, this section. To do that individually would take forever, but instead I sectioned off each layer or each section with its own null object. So I could even go in here and, you know, just change the rotation. So pretty cool trick. I think you can apply this same sort of structure for a lot of different things and I hope that will be helpful. A 
few interesting things are happening here. You can see that uh, there's a little bit to go over. There's a few pre-comps in here, but we're starting off with this footage. Let me just double click on it to show you the original. Essentially, we have this camera move. You can see, uh, again, I was handheld and I just rotated the camera on its roll axis and I just pan over to reveal our subject in the woods. And here she is, again, the same idea. She's kind of reaching out to us. This is the ideal place where she would be in nature, has more of a serene background, but uh, she's still not free yet. So part of the ways of showing that will be to black out her face so that she's more of a silhouette, a shadow of what she wants to be. And in the music video, to also further the idea of this transition to enhance this this pretty unique camera move, I wanted to play with this, and that's why I added a Kaleida effect to the beginning of this clip, which then transitions to the rest of this scene. So again, you can really use a very simple effect in so many different ways. It starts as this really kind of beautiful background. It's, it's very intricate. I love all these patterns that it forms. And then as it rotates, we actually have a transition happen. And this is from a transition pack. And these are some of the first things that I wanna show you in this series of how you can actually simplify your work, making it seem that much more intricate by leveraging work that you know other people have set up in terms of plugins, in terms of transitions, assets, and tools of that sort. So you can see that um, this transition, it's literally a kaleidoscopic transition from a transition pack that I reviewed before on this channel. But guys, if you haven't had the chance to check it out, these transitions best out there and I use them a lot whenever they make sense. And you can see that all those elements combined with the camera move now lead us into the scene in a really, really interesting way. The blacking out of the face, very, very simple. Let me just show you real quick what that looks like. If I go under the pre-comp here, all it is is a dark solid. It just took a lot of rotoscoping. Let me just expand the key, the keyframes here. Yeah. Here's a null object with the general movement. Here is uh, some additional keyframes that had to be done to the shape of the masks to fit her face and how she's rotating and moving around. And you might be asking yourself, like, what are these black lines over here? I've never seen them on my timeline. That is because I actually added a four color gradient and I picked four corners, four different shades of black that match with their corners over here. And I animated the color to adapt as the lighting was changing. This is a lot to unpack, but this is one of those kind of invisible techniques that I've used in the past that are going to completely change the game if you haven't used this before for your visual effects. This is such an easy way to trick lighting and to fake lighting into whatever you're adding. Let me turn this off. It doesn't really fit perfectly. You can see that that's correcting the lighting, the level of blackness versus if I take it off, it's very subtle, but you can see, well, at least in my monitor, I don't know if you'll be able to tell with the compression on YouTube, you see where the mask is connecting. And that's not an issue with the mask. You did that right. You know, you did all the masking, you did all the feathering, you animated all that. It's still not matching because the color is off. So that's why I added this four color gradient and literally I added keyframes to those colors so that every so often, every general move that she's making or shifting in position, I'm re-pick whipping the, the same corner with that different color that is now changed because the lighting has changed. So by keyframing those parameters, you can see that it's very subtle, but that along with everything else makes blacking out your character's face so easy and so convincing. And I've done this in a few other projects. One was um, in between an edit I did for Inanna. And you can see that again, this guy now has such a creep factor because we don't see his face. You know, it could be a creature, it could be a demon, it could be anything. But without this, we just see it's just some guy in a suit, you know? So for all your horror fans out there or for someone that's trying to create a trippy visual like this, this is pretty handy. So there we go. That's pretty much it for this video. I I'm not sure. There's so much more to talk about. And I'm actually dropping the full music video tomorrow so you can watch it. So what I want you to do is after you're done watching it, please let me know what other effects you're interested in in seeing a breakdown of. Whatever questions you have when I drop the music video tomorrow, I will make a follow-up video the next week or, or some somewhere this month where I can further break down other effects. But definitely tune in next week because I think one of the main effects that I'm already pretty set on doing is all of these double exposure effects. So again, I'm gonna show you how to shoot them 
when it comes to you know lighting, camera settings, the different camera moves that you can do. And also I'm gonna show you how you can actually edit it in post-production in After Effects. So I'm really excited for that, but I hope you found a ton of value in this video. That's what I'm trying to do with all these videos, and I hope that it's helping you tell your story and share your own unique perspective. All right, thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Chris Trini for Chris Coart, and I will see you tomorrow.